We'll go through the models first, then we'll cut it off, and then we'll go through a dead cat. Um, I'll run through these real quick, make sure we got them all down. Some of these are repeats from respiratory system, so the diaphragm, we don't need to worry about too much, we already did that. Um, peritoneal membranes, again, we talked about them in the lecture. The peritoneal membranes are the serous membranes associated with the abdominal cavity. So parietal peritoneum lines the cavity, so it would be the underside of the diaphragm or out this cavity here. Visceral peritoneum, all the abdominal organs, their outer surface, kind of like with the heart, is the visceral peritoneum in this case. And they're again for lubrication so the organs can slide around. Some of the stuff, you know, mouth, oral cavity, I think you can get just fine. Salivary glands. All right, let me go over the salivary glands. I need a different head. Where's his head, Gail? Right there. Ah, I lost my head again. <laughs> All right, yeah, salivary glands are okay on this one. So salivary glands, yeah, they're gonna be on human models. I won't ask salivary glands on a cat. Well, let's run through them real, real quick. All right, there's one, kind of just blown in front of the ear right here. This is the parotid salivary gland. Has a duct, it's going to the oral cavity to course secrete saliva. Underneath the mandible, there's a submandibular gland. It'd actually be kind of under the angle of the jaw. Mandible would be here. And under the tongue, this one here is the sublingual salivary gland. So you got three, submandibular, sublingual, and parotid salivary gland. Also, while we're here, tonsils. They're actually on the respiratory sheet, as well as the digestive sheet. I skipped them on respiratory. So tonsils, they're basically uh, non-encapsulated lymphatic tissue. They're a lot like uh, lymph nodes, except no capsule. But up here, this is in the nasopharynx. These are the pharyngeal tonsils. They're sometimes called adenoids on either side of the palate. So over here, and there'd be another one over here. These are the palatine tonsils. And this little pointy projection on the back of your tongue, that's the lingual tonsil. So those are the three tonsils. Again, those would be human models. I don't ask tonsils on the cat either. Uh, teeth. On the cat, of course, we won't ask well, I guess you can find the teeth on the cat, it's no big deal. But, you know, this is not good. Here's a tooth and just a couple of the parts I've got on your lab sheet. You got this outer kind of white layer. That's the enamel. That's uh, one of the hardest uh, substances you'll find in a human. It's mostly inorganic, like about 95% inorganic, calcium salts and such. Very hard, wear resistant, so that the teeth don't wear down as you chew a brace of food. This kind of yellow stuff here represents dentin which is similar to bone it's a living tissue it can regenerate that sort of thing and then there's a hollow space in the inside that's the pulp cavity filled with pulp which would be blood vessels nerves that sort of thing so that's the tip where the enamel covers it it's usually called the crown so that one should be pretty easy then tongue i figure you can find hard palate soft palate we did with the respiratory again that's just the roof of the mouth if it's supported by bone it's the hard palate, like right here. Soft palate is the fleshy projection in the back. Uh, pharynx, we already talked about that with the respiratory. Here's the pharynx and the three parts, nasopharynx, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx. Then, parts we haven't done yet, the esophagus. Below, I'll use both of these. Below the pharynx, again, this is where the respiratory and digestive systems diverge. If you go sort of ventrally, that's the larynx, and on down to the rest of the respiratory system. Dorsally, this is the esophagus. The esophagus is just a muscular tube. It will take the food from the pharynx down. It kind of goes behind the heart. You see a piece of it here on the torso model. It goes through the diaphragm right here, and it will conduct the food into the stomach right there. Now, for the stomach, Separate into regions. This is kind of the main body of the stomach. This little bit sticking up over here is a fundus. In the downstream end, this is where the intestines would attach. This is a pyloric region of the stomach. A couple other landmarks you might need. This is a lesser curvature here. This is a greater curvature. As we'll see in the cat, this is where the lesser omentum goes from the stomach to the liver. The omentum is kind of a serous membrane. Uh, Goes, it's where it's kind of folded together. It goes from the lesser curvature to the liver. Greater curvature is going to have this great sheet of material called the greater omentum. Uh, it's a fat storage area of protection. It's not on the model. Those two will be on the cat. Rugae of the stomach. All right, this one I can't open up. But if you cut open the stomach, 
The inner walls have these accordion-like folds called rugae. That allows the, the stomach to expand, because you know the stomach can be pretty small, but in some people you can fill us up with up to like four liters of food. It has to stretch out. You don't want it to tear. So those accordion folds or rugae allow the stomach to expand when you eat a large meal. Now, a couple of other bits on the stomach. All right, eat a large meal, swallow it. If you stand on your head, you don't want it all coming back out your esophagus and mouth, it'd be messy. Uh, so there are a couple of sphincters. Uh, they're kind of purse string-like valves at each end of the stomach. And you'll need these on the cat and the human models. Now, there's not really much to see. So if I ask you a question, it would say, identify the valve here or something, in quotes. But that, the valves are just a, a circular ring of, of smooth muscle. They're normally closed. The one between the stomach and the esophagus is called either the cardiac sphincter, the esophageal sphincter, or the gastroesophageal sphincter, you know, either one. There's another one at the downstream end of the stomach where it meets the small intestine. Let me hang my small intestines up. So this is the first part of the small intestine here. This valve acts like a metering valve to slowly kind of allow the contents of the stomach to dribble out. We'll call that the pyloric sphincter, so again, it's this area, uh, I'd usually ask a question, identify that in quotes valve or something so you know what I'm talking about. But that's about all we need on the stomach. Then, small intestine. This big mess here. This kind of all represents the small intestine. Now there are three regions of the small intestine. The, the duodenum, which is the first part right after the stomach, it's about 12 inches long in a human. Then the genum, then the ilium, which is about the last 11 feet. I'm not going to worry too much about landmarks because honestly, on this one, it's just plastic anyway, and we don't know them on the cat anyway. But the first part of the small intestine, it's actually fairly rigid. It's locked in place with all these mesenteries. That's the duodenum. And then the downstream end, you can see a bit of it coming up here. That's the ilium. Of course, small intestine actually does most of the digesting and most of the absorbing of nutrients. So, you know, this mass here, I just want small intestine. But if I'm close to the stomach, duodenum. If I'm close to the large intestine or colon, that end would be the, the ilium. And then there's a valve between the small intestine and the colon or large intestine right here. Kind of this white oval on this model. That's the ileocecal valve. You can see it on the cat as well. It's kind of like a one-way valve. Allows food to come out of the small intestine and into the colon because you probably don't want the fecal matter going backwards. I don't know. Imagine that could cause some issues. But that's the ileocecal valve. And in humans, you'll need to be able to find this little green thing hanging off here. This is the appendix. I think some cats technically have one, but they're really hard to spot, but pretty obvious in a human. Uh, that is a non-functional bit. I think it might have been a part of the larger cecum at one point. Cecum is this dead-end sac here. So you have the small intestine coming in, and the flow of material goes small intestine to large. But there's this little dead-end bag sitting off on the side here. That's the cecum. You know, humans is pretty small. Cats, it'll be pretty small. Herbivores, it's really big. But attached to that cecum is that little vermiform appendix, because it kind of looks worm-like. So there's your cecum. Uh, then you've got the large intestine. Now, in the human models, not on the cats, because I don't know where they are on a cat. Cat's kind of a carnivore. Its digestive system's a little more compact than ours, a little less elaborate. But this large gray area here, this represents the colon or large intestine. And so the part that goes up, that's what they'll, we'll call it the ascending colon. This part that goes around, transverse colon. And then there's a descending colon coming down. And this wiggly bit here is the sigmoid colon which ends at the rectum, kind of for fecal storage down here. Um, it's called large intestine. It's not longer, it's only about six feet long, but it's bigger in diameter, so it's fatter. Uh, it also, you'll see little strips of, this is longitudinal smooth muscle here. Those are called tenia coli, which usually causes the large intestine to kind of fold up into these bag-like folds here called hostra. So that's your colon, large intestine. Uh, let's see, what else we need? Then a couple other bits and pieces. Let's look at a liver model. Now the liver model, material on the liver model, I think it's 34 on your sheet. You need to know the liver and gallbladder on the cat, but none of the details and none of the lobes. So if you look at the liver, we've already done a little bit of it. Here's the inferior vena cava. That's a hepatic portal vein. That's a hepatic artery. And that is the hepatic vein right there. So we already did those. Now the lobes, liver, like the lung, is separated into some compartments, some lobes. This big one here, kind of on the right side of the liver, surprisingly, that's the right lobe. This one over here on the left side, the left. Then you see this little square looking lobe right here. That's a quadrate lobe. And this little bit kind of tucked by the vena cava here, that's the caudate lobe. So know the lobes of the liver, right, left, quadrate, caudate. 
And then here's a gallbladder. It's a storage site for bile. There are a series of ducts connecting the liver gallbladder to the small intestines. So the duct coming out of the gallbladder here, that's the cystic duct. The bile is actually made by the liver. These are the hepatic ducts here. So the bile comes out the hepatic ducts. And eventually the gallbladder, of course, is just a storage site for the bile. So here are the hepatic ducts, here's the cystic duct. They come together where it's been cut right here. There'd be another duct coming from here down to the small intestine. In fact, you can see it on the back of this model. That's part of what they call a common bile duct. So you have cystic duct, hepatic duct. They come together, form a common bile duct that comes down and it drains into the small intestine. There's a little bump. You see where they've cut a little window away on this model? That's so you can see internally, there's a little projection or bump here. That's called the duodenal papillae. That's actually where the bile duct comes out and bile is released into the small intestine. The bile is, is necessary to increase digest, digestive efficiency of lipids. Also, the pancreas, we've looked at it for the endocrine system. It's also an exocrine gland and they've cut away parts of it. There's a duct coming out of the pancreas. The pancreas produces a lot of digestive enzymes and some bicarbonate. That pancreatic duct also comes out the duodenal papillae it merges with the common bile duct. Let's see, I think it's all we need with the liver. Villi, there are some microscope slides where I'll show you villi a little later. Villi, if you look on the inside of the small intestine, if you cut it open, it kind of has the appearance of suede leather. There are all these little finger-like projections on the inner surface of the small intestine. That's to increase surface area, to increase you know, digestive efficiency, absorptive efficiency. Uh, let's see, the only other thing, I think that's, that's about it. Mesenteries, we kind of already looked at them with the mesenteric artery. You can't see them on the model, but we'll see them on the cat. There's a bit of one here. Those are those membranes that kind of hold the intestines in place. Of course, they're not all the models that well. That'll take care of the models. We going? Yep. All right, Gail. So here's a few of the bits on the cat. Of course, you know, hard palate, soft palate, we already did. Tongue, all of that. We don't need to worry about that. But here is the esophagus. So here's that trachea. The esophagus runs dorsal or behind the trachea. Here it is, just this little muscular tube. It'll go on down, on down through the diaphragm. And you can see it comes out kind of by the liver right here. So that's the end of the esophagus. So at this point would be the cardiac or esophageal sphincter and main body of the stomach here. And right about here, there's usually a little bit of a constriction. That's the pyloric sphincter. And now you can see the omentums on the cat. See, this is a lesser curvature, greater curvature of the stomach. This little membrane right here, it's kind of delicate. That's the lesser omentum. And this big mess right here, this big curtain-like thing attached to the greater curvature of the stomach, that's the greater omentum, fat storage in there. And I'll go ahead and open up the cat's stomach. We may be able to see some rugae. It depends on how distended the stomach was when they processed this guy. <coughs> But they open it up and not, not real obvious, but you see that little, get some of the food out of there. Wrinkle. That little fold right there. Yeah, that's one of the rugae. Then, of course, this is small intestine. This is the visceral peritoneum. You can see the mesenteries, you know, much more obvious on the cats and the models with those branches of the mesenteric artery in there. So this is all small intestine. Duodena would be the first part. And that's just small intestine, small intestine, small intestine, small intestine, small intestine. And eventually, the small intestine will end. It ends right here. Can you see that all right, Gail? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the ileum. This is a large intestine. See, it's bigger in diameter. And this little bag right here, that's a dead end pouch. That's the cecum. So right here, you got like three things, ileum, cecum, and colon or large intestine. And if I cut into the colon a bit here, you can also see if I get this material out of the way. Oh, they see that little puckery looking hole right there. That's where the small intestine is coming and that's the ileocecal valve. You can see it right there. And of course, that's the cecum going off this direction, a little dead end pouch. So this is a colon or large intestine. And you got your liver right here. Big, easy to spot. And kind of tucked between the lobes. See this little bag-like bit right here? 
That is the gallbladder. It's sometimes stained real green. It's not on this one. Now the ducts would be here, but I usually don't ask them on the cat. You'd have a cystic duct coming out here, hepatic ducts coming out here somewhere, and a common bile duct goes down to the small intestine here. Let's see, parietal peritoneum is just lining the parietal ca or the abdominal cavity here. Let's see, what else we got, Gail? I don't know, get it? Uh, you know, spleen right here. It's really part of the lymphatic system, but uh, I think, double check my sheet here. Gosh, that seems way too easy, guys. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, pancreas, I forgot something. Show them the spleen again, just in case. Okay, spleen is this big, dark, mass right here. It's lymphatic tissue. Now, if I take the spleen and the greater momentum and lift it up behind the stomach and the momentum, see that little light kind of looks like pale hamburger meat or something right here. That's the pancreas. So to find it, you just take the stomach and momentum, lift it up. There it is. Pancreas right there on a cat. It actually runs down the small intestine for a while as well. But that's it. That's the pancreas. Uh, and we got no parts of the colon. Oh, villi, let's look in the small intestine real quick. Like I said, if I ask villi, that's usually on a microscope slide because they're just too small to get pins or anything in. But if you open up the intestine a bit, scrape away the food, see how it's kind of, it's fuzzy looking, it looks a bit like suede leather. That's the villi. Again, if I ask them, it'd probably be on a slide, but uh, you can see them with the naked eye. They're macroscopic, just really tiny. Gosh, Gail. That's it. That's like it. All right.